it over there for <laughs> It's A back on your screen with another one. Hope you're all well. I couldn't let this month go by without doing a little bit of holiday baking, which is why today we're gonna make creme brulee. It's one of my favorites. Don't let this bougie dessert fool you. It's really, really easy to make. It only takes five ingredients. I love inflation. But before we get into it, truth moment, I almost left the heavy cream in the store. Inflation is inflationing. But I thought, let's get into the holiday spirit. It's my favorite dessert, so why not? If you love it too, let me know down below, or if you have a dessert you love more than creme brulee, I'd love to know. So, first things first, you gotta preheat your oven, 300 degrees. Grab you a dish, a tray, anything you can put a little bit of water in, and a whole bunch of ramekins. The more the better. I like my creme brulees to be about this size. You can also get a bigger one if you'd like, but it's so decadent. I like to have a little bit, but then have a lot so that I can share them with family and friends and also snack night after night instead of just having one big one. For me, my favorite part of the creme brulee is the crack part. So it literally is crack. Your next step is you're gonna take your water and just pour it like so. You're forming basically a water basin so that it keeps the temperature as balanced as possible. Careful with it, slide it to the side. We're gonna need that in a bit. But first, we're gonna need a little bit of whipping cream, vanilla bean. Ooh, actually stands. I need white sugar, right? Sucrose. How could I forget? Need a little bit of kosher salt too. I'm trying to go off the top with this recipe, but I haven't made it in a year or two. These cartons are so not aesthetic. We need eggs on eggs. Seven egg yolks, but we're not gonna waste the egg whites. We can make an omelet or a meringue later on. I made a meringue, so if I make it, I'll bring you guys along. You don't have to worry about bringing things to room temperature. There's one thing I hate about making something and having to let the batter sit for 24 when I want to eat it right now, right now. Or having to let butter soften or whatever. Nope, it's just everything fresh out the fridge. You're good to go. One more ingredient I'm forgetting, though. Plus salt. See? The good thing about losing vision is it forces you to use your memory more. So we have our five ingredients. All we gotta do is start off by measuring out our heavy cream, four cups to be exact. Depending where you live, it may be called whipping cream or heavy cream. It's the same thing as long as it's 35% or more, you're good to go. I never know which side to open though, so what I do is I feel where the crease is. Is Canada the only country that has bagged milk? Growing up, I never knew that was weird until people that weren't from here said that was weird. Got another bowl, it's time to measure out the sugar. We're gonna do three quarters cup, split into two parts. One part for the egg mixture and the other part for the cream that's heating up. Whenever I measure three quarters of a cup, I take a half and I take a quarter. Rather than scooping three times, you only gotta scoop twice. Especially when you're visually impaired, I'm always trying to find cheat codes to do everything. Also, one of my tricks whenever baking is whatever they ask for measurement wise, I do a little less sugar and a little bit more flavor. So vanilla is a flavor or almond extract, I add more of that. With sugar, I always do a little less than what they say. I find it's less than that. Ta -da! Just gonna keep checking the cream. I don't want it to boil, never that. But instead, we're gonna let it warm up a little bit. That's about half. I gotta be real with you guys, I'm not really big on the eggy smells, so this part's gonna get difficult real quick. Ugh, let's get into this part. How am I gonna get the yolks into there? I don't know how to do this. And then, I don't wanna do it too many times because that's how the yolk pops. See, isn't this gross? It looks like boogers. You! Oh, oh no! Oh, oh, yolk down, yolk down. What a failure. Do you see that? I never said I was good at this part. Poopity, poopity, scoop. 
poopity poopity scoop. This is harder than I remember, guys. Three left. Do you think I can get better with each one? I want to learn how to do a one-handed break. Egg yolks and shrimp heads, I can't get with. They both creep me out. And then there was one. to go for the whole mess you know now that I've succeeded in making a mess let's whisk these egg yolks to the yolks we're gonna add the second half of sugar okay I always gotta smell it to make sure I'm not shaking from the wrong side one two three four five don't ask me how I know, that's a quarter teaspoon. I just do more salt, one last whisk. Put over there for <laughs> These mishaps, at least you know we're really going through it. So you're gonna need a knife. This is my favorite part of making creme brulee other than eating it. Take one of your vanilla beans. We're gonna cut it down the middle. it but it's starting to bubble we're not trying to boil that's a different recipe so I'm gonna turn it on super low just in time to scrape the pod in all the seeds that I cannot see I should have used a different color knife because then maybe I could see the black on say a butter knife but that's okay we've come this far I'm sure it'll still work out so I just like to scrape into that little cut I made if I've gotten enough off the pod dip the tip to release the seeds. That looks and smells about right. The vanilla beans have infused with the cream sugar mixture. Now it's time to temper. This is the only thing you have to be careful about. We're not trying to cook our eggs and curdle it. Let me get closer. Because this could be catastrophic. You've seen my track record. Trying to get that double-handed action. I left the pot in. Because we're gonna do this very slowly, so every moment it's in there can infuse even more. I'm so happy I can still kind of see the specks. I thought I wouldn't be able to see them at all. I could really see them when I first started making this recipe years ago. Taking our time, make sure that we slowly heat up the egg mixture without getting a bad consistency. Every time. You know what this reminds me of? When you try to pat your head and rub your tummy at the same time, I can do it with my right hand, but not my left. Every time I try to, I start patting my tummy in a circle. It doesn't make sense. I don't know why. Can you do that? Okay, let's focus. Honestly, after a certain point, you can just pour the rest of the liquid in. The eggs are heated up to the same temperature, so it won't be problematic. But I just like to do this all the way through, just to be sure. Back in, two trays. This part gets messy real quick, I can't even lie to you guys. I'm gonna try to under pour so I don't get into water mixture, just right into the ramekins.
there's a lot left. So you know what? We'll make one big one. If I can fit it. Okay, all that's left to do is pop these in the oven for 40 minutes. Lapse time about 30 minutes. Lights on because the sun is down. We're gonna put this in the fridge for at least two hours, but you can do it for up to three, four days. You know how I said the vanilla bean is the best part? It might be, but this is the most fun part. So now that it's chilled for a little over two hours, we're gonna sprinkle it with sugar and lock, drop, and torch it. The trick to a perfect crust is when you think you put too much, you definitely have it. I've also tried this with brown sugar and it's really good. It gives it more of a caramelly flavor. But let's just keep it classic today. Flame, maybe it needs a little more juice. So let's pump, pump, pump it up. That smell though, Whew. Let's see if the crack is cracking. I could get my little drummer boy on, eh? Yo, that's certified. I'm so excited to crack the crumb. Let's get it. <laughs> Impressive, but it was worth it to crack the crispy layer on top. I torched it so long that the custard's warm again, but I'm not mad at it. I actually prefer it when it's like this. It's so, so good. Nothing like a creme brulee. Anyway, I'm gonna enjoy the rest of this. This is where the video ends, so I hope you enjoyed another Bake With Blindy session. If you did, you know what to do. Comment down below what you wanna see next, and until next time, stay safe, stay sane, stay blessed, love and later.